From the very launch pad used for that first moon mission nearly 50 years ago, today another potentially historic achievement. A privately built SpaceX rocket became the world's most powerful rocket when it did this. Three, two, one. And with that, the triple rocket called Falcon Heavy also became a potential stepping stone for the mission to Mars. It almost didn't launch today because of multiple weather delays. And as Ron Charles tells us, when it did, it surprised even the people who made it all happen. So much could have gone so wrong with this test flight. Four, three, two, one. But the world's most powerful rocket did not explode into a giant ball of flames on its maiden launch, a real possibility, warned its creator. Instead, Falcon Heavy's 27 engines shone brightly, roared skyward, and awed people on the ground. Dozens of engineers and rocket specialists at private space flight company SpaceX spent years working towards this moment. It didn't end there. Two and a half minutes later and 61 kilometers up, Falcon Heavy's three reusable boosters started separating from each other to head back to Earth. Just five minutes after that, two of them landed on the ground in tandem, science fiction style. The third had the more difficult task of landing on this drone barge in the Atlantic. It didn't make it. Even SpaceX founder, billionaire industrialist Elon Musk was amazed that it all came together. I'm still trying to absorb everything that happened because it uh, seems surreal to me. Space flight experts who watched the launch lauded the achievements. Well, this is a demonstration of rocket power that can take humans away from this planet once again something we haven't done since the last Apollo mission in December of 1972. Rocket test flights typically include a payload simulator, usually a weighted disposable metal box with sensors. In a bit of facetious cross-promotion, Musk, also founder of electric car company Tesla, used his own cherry red Tesla Roadster. Fitted with live streaming cameras, it carries a dummy named Starman dressed in a SpaceX-designed spacesuit. Musk is hoping the car travels in orbit around the sun as far out as Mars for millions of years to come. Ron Charles, CBC News, Toronto. What we all just witnessed today was math in motion and a private company taking on what NASA can't, what no government anywhere in the world can do. So let's look ahead. What does today's launch mean for the future of space travel? And I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. Today's launch makes it clear the billionaire dreamer is also a doer. The Falcon Heavy more than a vanity project, although there is surely some of that to it. What, what, what's the purpose of sending a car to Mars? There's no, there's no point, <laughs> obviously. It's just for fun. After a few years of over-promising and under-delivering, the 2017 launches of the smaller Falcon 9 proved to the world that Musk had not only figured out the engineering but the business plan build the rockets, launch them, recycle them. So bring the cost of space travel down and open it up as a market for new clients. Think of this as a commercial sector in low orbit, but great ideas attract competitors. Laura Forzik is a space consultant and is keeping track of who is chasing Musk. There are a few companies that are competing with SpaceX. So here in the States, we have ULA, United Launch Alliance. You have another private company called Blue Origin, which is owned by Jeff Bezos. Outside of the States, you've got in Europe, the Ariane Group. And then, of course, NASA has its contract to build the SLS, the Space Launch System. Russia and China both have projects, but their progress is murky in details. This isn't a terrible development for cash-strapped NASA. It now has options. A Falcon Heavy can go to the moon, it can go to Mars, um, but it also can go to the space station um, or to other space stations in the future. And why, if you're not an astronaut, would this matter? Might as well ask an astronaut. Your power grid, your cell phone, um, your traffic control, people are using it way more than they realize, and that infrastructure costs money. And it, we're going to have to update, maintain, get smarter how we put that infrastructure in space. 
But doesn't that mean trusting in the ethics of those commercial industries? Well, I don't think that that uh, question is is unique to space. That's across the board that we trust our industry, and and sometimes I guess we have government policies uh, in order to help them make the right decisions. But I just wouldn't have any reservations. Elon Musk also has a plan to launch hundreds of small satellites for global connectivity, and his plans for them are, are, are still a little bit in progress. So if he is successful, then, then who does police all of this? Well, great question. You know, ethics on Earth are complicated enough. Uh, there are some safety regulations in place, but it's a balance. You know, too much regulation could stifle industry before it really gets off the ground.